One thing that's always been missing from The Sims games is time. No, not that. No, not that either. No, not that. What the frick does that have to do with time? Get out of here. No, by time, I mean like decades and crap. So much of modern society is lumped into one decade or another, and it's a huge part of pop culture which The Sims tries to emulate. SimCity had decades, and the look of buildings and cars even changed for time periods in some versions, so why doesn't The Sims? Well, I'm here to tell you that we still don't have proper decades. But what do you know, a new stuff pack is here to tease me with greatness it can't possibly provide, called The Sims 3, 70s, 80s, and 90s stuff. Quite the freaking mouthful of a name there, you'd think they'd just call it decade stuff or something, though that would be a bit ambiguous. Hasn't stopped them before though, I mean it's not like Town Life or Diesel stuff were the most descriptive possible names either. Warp your Sims back in time. Except not, because Sims don't have any concept of years or decades whatsoever, so it's entirely up to you to use your imagination. And in that case, why even buy this pack since imagination is free? Uh, I don't know, so just leave your brain at the door and start up the game, where you'll be greeted with an acceptably average loading screen made by someone that has an obsession with circles. The junk this time around has been separated by EA into three categories. The groovy 70s, the awesome 80s, and the grunge 90s. Not sure why they didn't choose a G word for the 80s, which would have made it an alliteration-friendly GGG. Instead, the acronym we're gifted with is GAG, which may or may not be appropriate depending on your feelings regarding this pack. Let's just take a look at hair, clothing, and objects though, since the decade separation can be a tad vague. First, we've got a handful of new hair options for both men and women, though there's not nearly as much as I thought there would be. These decades are ripe for iconic do's, so why didn't they capitalize on this? I mean, seriously, where are the afros and high top fades, the big hair and mullets, the bowl cuts, and ramen noodles or whatever the frick this is that makes me hungry? Sure, you've got a fair amount of retro-looking hair in the base game and other expansions already, but for a themed stuff pack, I expected more. Thankfully, you do get a porno stash for men, which is all I ever really wanted anyway. Then there's clothing, which unfortunately is mostly all for adult women. Not saying it's horrible, in fact it's quite awesomely vintage and is sure to make hipsters piss themselves ironically. It's just that it's heavily lopsided in terms of what clothes you get for what gender and for what ages. You only get a few token clothing items for dudes, one single outfit for teen girls, none for teen boys, and nothing for children whatsoever. Not to mention you don't get any shoes at all, which makes zero sense considering how much footwear is associated with these three decades in particular. And no, you don't get any accessories either, so once again the modding community is going to have to come to your rescue if you want nice things. You do get some new decade appropriate makeup though, which is quite handy if your up needs making. Then we have the objects, and these are pretty good at least. In the living room here, you get some TVs of various sizes, some flashy and or obnoxious wall art, friggin' plants, a slab of a coffee table, a love seat, two chairs, a non-adjustable adjustable floor lamp, a hanging fireplace, and a new door frame. You also get a lounge chair, a chair, chair, another couple tables, a bookcase adorned in strangeness, and a disappointing arcade machine. Disappointing because it's still the same Freezer Bunny game being played, even though it has some sweet Tron-like bezel artwork that implies otherwise. For the dining room, you get the most unexpected things possible. A dining table and dining chairs. Glam rocker wannabe not included, but totally recommended. And finally, you also get some extracurricular activities, like a neon foosball table, two stereo systems, a face-meltingly radical guitar, some epilepsy-inducing party lights, and a dance floor. A very nice touch here is the addition of three new radio stations, disco, rock, and rap. Most all the music is taken from the original Sims game, which, while a bit lacking in the effort department, is incredibly nostalgic. It also features some new compositions, like the absolutely superb Sims Guitar Medley by Julian Conroy. And I loved this track when I first saw the video he posted on YouTube of it, so I was elated to see it here as an official part of the game. So, is The Sims 3 70s, 80s, and 90s stuff worth your money or not? 
As all friggin' ways, the suggested retail price is 20 US dollars. For that, you get 36 items, all of which are pretty much the minimum you'd expect, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that there's quite a bit that seems left out for the time period it mimics, and if you were counting on some of those things being there, then this may not be worth grabbing. Though the new music is great, the stuff is decent, and I can see myself using a few of these things continually, if only because I like retro goodies. But if I weren't committed to buying these for reviewing purposes, I'd have just waited until it came down in price. Actually, I'd have been happy paying a bit less and getting it online like the 50s and 60s themed items they already have there. It really seems like they're ignoring stuff packs that the community actually wants, like more things for teens and children, for example, but that's another subject. So if you wanted stuff from these decades and think the price is fair, you may just find this hits the shag-carpeted polyester spot. Yeah,